Hear me? Please listen carefully. Listen. It was from Zaria that the Lord sent me here. There is a spirit over that region. You start a walk, it does not last more than three years. Something must happen that brings you down. You may still be there, but you never maintain the texture of your glory. There are regions like that. I sought for a man who would stand in the gap. Woe betides a family with no intercessor. Woe betides a business with no intercessor. Don't you think because it's business you don't intercede? Woe betides a ministry that has sounds and mics and has beautiful skilled people but without intercessors. Woe betides a preacher without personal intercessors no matter how anointed you are in this end times if there are no men who can hold on the altar for you you may not last i tell you the evil of the times will eat you up to your shame and surprise Please sit down. Controlling powers. I've shared with you my vision that I was praying some years ago when the ceiling in my room just disappeared and I'm seeing this spirit and this being looking at me looking like Leviathan looking like, like, like a dinosaur with a tail that had its own life the eyes were big as a human eye and he says so you think you can bring god's people into abundance and i saw that spirit there are horns that stop the voices of men from rising to the nations there are many anointed people in this nation there are many gifted people in many families but there are spirits sitting on their glory number one please sit please sit discernment and the understanding of the controlling powers the primary explanation to territorial backwardness is not the blindness of the people human beings are god's creation they are not that dull only god would open your eyes to see the territories assigned over nigeria don't you think nigeria is just sitting free of attacks Go and see the powers that reside in the sea the powers that manipulates the elements of nature a ministry like this you think the devil would just fold his arms and watch no sir but we look to Yahweh Yahweh our hope is Yahweh Yahweh Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Lord, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh. hallelujah oh i didn't see reverend vindiolu god bless you sir such an honor to have you and your team thank you so much sincerely celebrate and appreciate you listen to me let me finish what i'm doing and would we'll dedicate some time you are not praying this night for yourself do you know that in the peace of a territory is your peace 
in the peace of your family is your peace God is birthing spiritual midwives tonight who will hold on the four horns of the altar and cry until something breaks open So the principle of prophetic intercession number one the fortitude to discern the controlling powers jesus knew this when jesus was going to gadara he was not just sleeping he was resting but in discernment the spirits that possess the gatherings notice that in gadara some people were doing well whereas some people were suffering it was based on their negotiation with the spirits can i tell you there are controlling powers that sit over cities you don't do business and prosper until you come to them you can do a general small business but you are about to hit a threshold they will invite you come sit we don't just rise like that ask jesus when jesus was about to start his mission satan took him into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and say all has been given to me unfortunately satan is not the only jesus is not the only person satan has taken to that mountain there are many people preachers have gone to that mountain businessmen have gone to that mountain and some did not say no can i tell you this go and ask any truly successful person who is successful at a global scale they will tell you that the time must come when envoys who represent the workings of darkness they invite you to a council it is based on negotiation not intelligence from that level as a preacher and as a man of god it's like there is a spiritual meter that measures your impact you keep rising provided you are just generally doing your thing help that lady i curse that spirit in the name of jesus christ rise to a particular point of influence here they come to you your father tried this are you aware influence does not just happen because you have what to say it is victory over controlling powers the king of tyre sits upon the economic hub of the earth how dare you prosper without compromise without coming to him this is why jesus said what shall it profit a man if he gains and loses my question who was the businessman that did business with him that you gave your soul there are musicians who were taking up that mountain they freely gave their soul for fame can i tell you this this she goddess babylon that sits upon the circles of the earth is interested in everything including the souls of men let me show you a scripture revelations 18 we're about to pray revelations 18 this is the fall of babylon let's start from verse 1 we'll read from verse 1 to 5 and then we'll go to verse 9 and end with 13 please pay attention everyone please look and learn after these things i saw another angel come out from heaven having great power and the earth was lightened with his glory to five and he cried mightily with a strong voice saying babylon the great is falling is fallen and is become a habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird verse three i want you to read this by yourself are you ready one to read for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her who is the her babylon 
and the merchants of the earth how did they get rich read it our works rich through the abundance of her delicacies they did not just prosper there was a negotiation that happened verse 4 i heard another voice in heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not her plagues go to verse 9 go to verse 9 and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning verse 10 standing afar off for the fear of her torment saying alas that great city babylon the mighty city for in one hour is thy judgment come and the merchants of the earth shall weep why will they weep for no man buy their merchandise so why were they buying their merchandise before it was not because they could buy and sell there was a spirit that they negotiated with over the territory verse 12 now listen let me show you what this system sells all these things are available for purchase the controlling powers i will tell you the assignment of controlling powers they ensure transgenerational allegiance to satan they control everything the systems and the structures to make sure you cannot rise by righteousness you negotiate with them they give you access the merchandise of gold silver precious stones pearls fine linen purple and silk scarlet thyine wood and all manner of vessels of ivory these are the things she sells and all manner of vessels of most precious wood you know the bible says what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and does what that means if babylon gives you the world what does she collect i will show you what she does with those souls verse 13 let's read cinnamon odors ointments hold on babylon can give you anointing she sells it too you can go and say i'm tired of ministry not working let's negotiate this territory cannot be that difficult and she says i will give you anointing frankincense and wine and oil fine flour and wheat and beast now you start reading sheep horses what else what does she sell again where did she get the souls the people who came to her for exchange babylon has souls babylon has slaves she can give you access to the hearts of men so that whether you sing anything no matter how nice it is a million people can love you in one day those souls come from her it does not just happen dear people of god why does the devil assign these spirits in territories to make sure no territory is ever saved as a territory if he tries your individual salvation and it does not work he can give up but he's waiting for you at a territorial level satan is obsessed with transgenerational allegiance your forefathers worshipped him through mediums grandfathers worshipped him through mediums and someone suddenly arises and say no more we will rise in your name Adonai hey, you reign on high we will rise sing your name Adonai here comes a generation that says we will not bow to babylon and yet we will prosper yet we will advance and satan says you have drawn the line here you go say unto god how terrible art thou in thy ways it is through the greatness of thy power 
that thy enemies submit themselves can i tell you this hear me when god raised missionaries from africa and when he brought missionaries from europe and from america they taught us the evangelical dimension of the gospel but they did not teach us there are retaliations for refusing the allegiance of satan so number one for starters malaria killed them we know now that it's not malaria you know you we know that isn't it oh yes you don't step into a shrine and just break it and all you know is just a gospel of salvation it takes the gospel of the kingdom to walk in dominion and so many of our fathers and mothers and loved ones innocently said look we pledge our allegiance to jesus we no longer will worship these idols but they did not know that your fortification is based on spiritual intelligence and these spirits came with harsh retaliations do you know what there is a generation now that is returning back because they are saying like gideon we have not seen this power again we have tried this church thing i was a christian and i did not get a job they will tell you i was a christian and i did not get whatever i wanted it didn't come by righteousness therefore i am returning back and you see the speed with which the devil gives them breakthrough not every testimony came from god there are testimonies that are a product of fraternity with babylon satan is making running to him marketable those who run to him he will lavishly restore and give all kinds of things and you will see a man beat his chest and say when i was a christian i was a poor man i was miserable as a preacher now that i've created alternatives look at my life initially you will refuse him until you see your children crying and for two years they have not gone to school satan comes to you again job will you still hold your integrity job said though he slay me yet will i trust him he said all the days of my appointed time i will wait number two what is the second principle of prophetic intercession faith and persistence you cannot become an effective intercessor if you do not engage with faith and you do not sustain persistence it takes an appreciable time period to break through the spiritual limitations that hold on to the minds of families and regions and territories and advocate a release for them please look up even though moses met god he did not just go to egypt and in one night he brought them out no pharaoh is stubborn he will not let them go even god told moses he said even though i've made you a god to pharaoh this guy you see is not himself he will not let you go it was after 10 plagues hebrews chapter 6 and verse 15 this is where many intercessors give up and so after he had patiently endured he obtained the promise not after he had prayed not after he had believed god can i tell you this some of you today the dimension of grace god has brought you was a 25 year prayer of your mother 30 year prayer of your grandmother don't you think intercession just happens in two days you've cried for three weeks and you are tired and say lord i've given up ask go and read your bible and find out how many years Anna the prophetess interceded for Jesus why will you need to intercede for Jesus when is the father who is sending him down to the earth from the time she became widowed she started interceding over a period of 60 years she interceded for the arrival of Jesus can I tell you this go and read church history read about the moves of god and you will learn that there were people there were missionaries who did not really have spiritual power per se but they held on to the horns of the altar and they prayed and 
prayed and prayed weeks became months months became years years became decades suddenly the heavens opened and you will see a young boy in the farm and fire would fall upon him go and read the history of the church in nigeria you see many believers who are not students of history that's why the secret to the future is in yesterday go back and study yesterday study the generals study those who serve the purposes of god men like archbishop benson idahosa papa ayo and baba lola you go and read about them you may not know but they were prophetic intercessors who prophesied their arrival and prayed they were not educated they were not wealthy but they understood the art of prophetic intercession our generation is not praying for anything we are just praying for cars houses lord you've given me five add three more in my lifetime and god is saying look at you are not you are not long term you are not kingdom in your perspective I'm not saying those things are wrong. You've given me 10 houses, are two. Lord, you've made me, make me the greatest man of God within a city. And God says, why? Mundane desires. An intercessor is obsessed with seeing prophecy birthed. When Anna the prophetess held Jesus, she said behold i have seen the consolation of israel do you know how powerful it is when an intercessor sees prophecy birthed in your lifetime there are many of you here who are parents don't weep over your personal failure begin to invest over your grandchildren lord grant that in my lifetime i see a prophet that comes from my loins grants that in my lifetime i see one who the government will be upon his shoulder see these are the kinds of destiny prayers we need to obtain grace to stop praying this tea and bread lord give me kill this one and leave me and mm -mm, you need to go to the horns of the altar and start praying national and territorial prayers john knox went on his knees and said lord give me scotland or i die choose one Take away my life and let it know that I failed or give me Scotland. Go and read about the revival. Unfortunately, most of those regions today do not appreciate the sacrifices. You see, if you don't teach children history, they will abuse privileges. This is a very honest advice. If God blesses you, don't just give your children money. Teach them the value of sacrifice. Blessing people without teaching them history is what leads to compromises. There are many, many fathers who should teach sons in the gospel. The sacrifice that brought the anointing that they are easily and carelessly enjoying. Some of the most lawless people in society are children. Because the car was given free. Everything was given free. You can find a man who is a billionaire. Sometimes he can even fly economy. Because life has whipped him so much there's no point to prove. And you will see a lawless child with nothing flying private jet and his mind is empty and he's about to destroy the father's fortune two years after the death of the father he's gone down because there's no wisdom i have a message i pray that i will teach it on father's day the concept of inheritance i will share with you what the bible calls inheritance there are five things if you do not give your child you are failed unfortunately 80% of men have not given that to their children. Most of what we give is not inheritance. Go and look at Abraham and Isaac. He never gave Abraham any material thing. But to all the sons that he had with Hagar and other concubines, he gave them physical things. Giving your child a physical thing is the least way to help them. Sila. And then wait for that. Wait for that series. Father's Day Maranatha. <laughs> Galatians 6 and verse 9. We're wrapping up. Let us not be weary in well-doing. That includes intercession. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't be weary. 
you've been praying for the salvation of your loved ones for the past five years could it be that you are just two weeks left don't give up can i tell you for some reason experience has shown that mothers are better intercessors or women i think it's because of the pain of childbirth there are many people god is using today who it was not their personal desire to be used by god mama did not go to school but she used the power of prayer to route the head of that child to a prayer meeting he was on his way somewhere and the intercession of mama of many years and he just said let me step in and rest and that was where fire fell on that person someone prayed for you to be saved i hope you are praying for someone else intercession let me round up by teaching you the blessing of an intercessor there are three blessings in scripture that follows an intercessor number one intercession is a seed please understand this according to the law of seed time and harvest every time you engage in the ministry of intercession is a seed you are sowing and based on the integrity of that law there is a harvest that is coming for you one of the you ask any serious intercessor he will tell you most of the things you pray for others about you will not need to pray for yourself about it job 42 and verse 10 please give it to us job 42 and verse 10 help those under the anointing please read with me one to read and the lord turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends also the lord gave job how many listen you read the beginning of job's prayer he was praying for himself wondering what was going wrong but job came to a point where he almost accepted his fate and he said do you know what i'm already a dead man let me focus on praying for my friends at least let them have hope if i am hopeless and he engaged a mystery please keep that scripture there that god turned the captivity of job when he prayed for his friends god can turn your captivity as you pray for other sinners as you pray for your family members mentioning them by name every true believer should have a prayer altar write the names of people would you be that one person that when things are not going wrong when things are not going right and they need someone to stand you are the one they call they say listen i don't know what is happening to my marriage but can i trust you to pray for me rather than gossiping around with people's issues pray rather than making a lot of noise over what is the meaning of this why is this church going down pray rather than praying and saying this man is like his business is going down shame on him pray job james 5 13 is anyone afflicted let him pray i believe in the ministry of intercession sincerely let me tell you you go and ask god i stand before the god of heaven and i tell you this more than 80 to 85 percent i hope i'm not lying of my prayer is not for myself and it's not because it's not because i am a man of god and i have a spiritual responsibility i like to know what is wrong especially for a family that may not have the spiritual intelligence to handle it my real anointing works when there is trouble yes sir oh apostle it looks like the devil is just that's all right just give me the prayer request doesn't mean you go and sleep too let me give you a caution because some of sometimes if you don't balance these teachings pray for me pray for me has also produced a lazy people in the body of christ they just give you a prayer request and add a small seed and go and sleep don't practice that kind of attitude is very bad 
there there are certain victories that is you and god that will flog it out alone are we together if you are playing football we can't play the football for you we can only cheer you but you are the one who kicks that ball to the goal post the blessing of an intercessor number one that intercession is a seed and every time you intercede do not allow the devil cheat you and make you believe that you are do you know sometimes you'll be mandated to pray for people who will never even appreciate you even when they know you are interceding now from a human standpoint it is painful because if you tell them i'm praying for you you are just seeing doors open they'll say you are praying for me carry your prayer and pray for yourself and yet god says continue that's why i told you the foundation of the intercessory ministry is love number two very quickly what is the second blessing of an intercessor access to the secrets of god over territories and over people the blessing of an intercessor is that by reason of your your opening your heart to intercede god can trust you with the secrets of territories and the secrets of destinies God can open your eyes and tell you something about a man of God, about a church, about a people that no other person, not even the person he's talking about may know. You have earned his trust by reason of being an intercessor. He can trust you with the pain of people because he knows that you will pray for them. Genesis 18. 17 and 18 let's hurry up genesis 18 17 and 18 and the lord said shall i hide from abraham that thing which i do seeing that abraham shall surely become a great and a mighty nation and that all the nations of the earth will be blessed through him are you seeing the key now i know that whatever i do for him is for the sake of others so i can trust him there are many people today who pray for the spirit of revelation lord grant me access to illumination lord open me up to the prophetic and you know many times when people come and tell me apostle what is the secret to the prophetic i tell them is love not power can god open you up to the details of a family especially when it is negative can god trust you with the secrets of men and you pray for them this is our generation that our mouth does not close. Can God show you the weaknesses and the limitations of people and trust you to pray for them? Can God show you the limitations of a nation, of a politician, of governments, of families? If God opens your eyes and you see the spirit that sits upon the destinies of a particular family, can you pray for them as instructed and yet be quiet? There are some of you god trusted you with the secrets of men he opened up to you in dreams and showed you things to pray for about men about ministries about politicians and you ran your mouth up and down and god said no more let's withdraw that grace for the safety of that person you are a christian but you have not earned the right to be trusted can god trust you it's a message i preached years ago please go and look for it it's an audio message some of these audio messages will do the video versions of them powerful message can god trust you god loves everybody but he does not trust everybody he gave unto one five talent and two and one as a measure of his trust for them 